Hey everyone, how's it going? Connor today at eTrailer.com. We're going to be taking a look at the universal install kit for trailer brake controllers here on our 2018 Chevrolet Express van. So this universal installation kit here is going to be an excellent option here for our van. If you're like most vehicles, there aren't going to be any trailer wiring provisions or provisions for a seven-way, which is why this is going to be an excellent option. It's going to take an existing four-way we have and it's going to turn it into both a seven and four-way trailer connector. Now the seven-way trailer connector, these are going to be used on our larger trailers that have a brake output circuit. It's going to be paired perfectly with a brake controller of your choice because it comes with all the extra needed components needed to do so, such as the circuit breakers, extra wiring, and all the connectors. So as we said, the nice thing about this kit is it not only comes with the seven-way that we'll need for the trailers with brakes, but it also still retains our smaller four-way trailer connector, which is going to be just for the basic functions, such as the tail lights, the left and right turn signals, as well as the ground circuit. So as we can see here, when we purchase the additional mounting bracket, it's going to have a very clean factory-like install look. So in regards to installation, this is definitely going to be something you're going to want to use if you're adding a brake controller to your vehicle. It's going to come with everything we need and it can be adapted to pretty much any brake controller we want to use. The process to install this is very straightforward. We only have a couple connections. It's actually going to plug into an existing four-way, which most vehicles have plug and play options for. Then we're going to have to run one wire to the battery, we're going to have to attach a ground, and then the other one into the cab of the vehicle. And that's it for the seven-way side. We're also going to have some extra components if we don't have any trailer brake controller wiring visions, which means we're going to have to run a power and ground wire from the battery to the brake controller as well. This kit comes with everything we need to do that. So to start our installation today, we need to find a place to mount our trailer connector here. Now there's a couple different options for this, however, the best one we have found is going to be to mount it right here to the hitch body. However, we don't want to drill into the hitch body, which is where this long no drill mounting bracket is going to come into play. Now you're going to need to get this separately because it doesn't come with the kit, but it makes things extremely easy. We don't have to do any drilling and it's going to mount the trailer connectors right here to the hitch body in a nice convenient location. So now if you do end up using this long no drill bracket like us, we'll go ahead and show you how to install it real quick. We're going to take this back curved edge piece that's going to go on the back side at the top of our hitch body. And then we're going to take our band clamp here and we're going to slip it through that hole in our bracket and around the receiver tube body. Then we can take the end of the band clamp back up and insert it. Now we're going to take an 8 millimeter socket. We're going to try to tighten this up. We're going to leave it loose for now until we can get the top bolts on our trailer connector bracket in. So now we're going to assemble the trailer connector mounting bracket that did come in our kit to our seven way. We're going to take this open end here, the curved surface pointing back. We're going to slide all of our wires and trailer connectors through this opening here. Then we're going to bring it up, made it up like that. There's four holes we're going to need to align. This hardware comes with, we have the smaller bolts here, place that through there like so. And then on the back side, we're going to be using a flat washer, a lock washer, and then our hex nut. We're going to do that for all three holes and tighten these down now. So we went ahead and tightened up all four of our bolts, which hold our trailer connector to our trailer connector mounting bracket. Now we can go ahead and attach it to the trailer mounting to the trailer mounting bracket on our trailer hitch. Now, as you said, we want to leave this loose so we have some room to work here. And in the kit, you're going to get these two small bolts you see here. We're going to use these to secure the two brackets. Now, let's go ahead and tighten down these brackets together using a Phillips head and a 10 millimeter socket. Now, in order to make room for our wiring harness, we went ahead and tucked it to the side here, back over the hitch body, and now we're going to tighten down our band clamp. So now that we have our mounting bracket installed, we can go ahead and begin attaching our wires. Now, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to attach the four pole we see here to the four pole we already have on our vehicle. 
Now this part of the installation could vary a little bit depending on if your four-way is inside the vehicle or outside the vehicle. However, ours is outside the vehicle, so this is going to be a much easier option. What we're going to do is we're going to take the four pole from the vehicle side and we're going to attach it to the four pole on the back of the connector. Before we do so, we want to take some dielectric grease and we want to place it in the pins so we can make sure we don't have any rust or corrosion issues. Now we can mate the two together. Just like that. And the next thing we're going to do is, these dust caps are going to get in our way, so we're going to go ahead and cut those off since we won't be using these. And another thing I recommend is, if we take some black electrical tape, we're going to go ahead and we're going to tape these two connectors together. Number one, so they don't come apart, and number two, so we're again just preventing any water getting in there and causing any trailer lighting issues. We may need to wipe away some of the grease on the outside here in order to get a good bond with our electrical tape. So now I'm sure you're going to notice we have quite a bit of excess wire hanging down. So what we're going to do now is just we're just going to fold this up. We're going to secure it with some zip ties to our frame, part of the vehicle's existing wiring, anything we can do to keep this out of the way. So now you can see we have our wires all nice and secure. This may vary a bit depending on how your trailer connector was previously secured. But the next thing we're going to move on to is our white wire here, which is for the ground. Now we already have a ring terminal clamped onto the end, so we just need to find a place to attach it. I don't want really to really drill any holes into this vehicle, so I looked around a little bit. I'm not sure if you can see it, but on the edge of this metal structure here, we're going to see a pre-drilled hold, which we could easily use to attach our ring terminal for our ground. So I'm just going to take some hardware that I found around the shop. We're going to go ahead and attach that now to this pre-existing ground, or to the pre-existing hole. Keep in mind, you will need to supply this hardware on your own. So now you can see we have three wires left to connect. Our yellow wire here is going to be for the reverse light circuit. If we're towing a boat trailer that has a reverse lockout actuator, we need to attach that. But for the majority of applications, this reverse wire won't be used. So we're just going to tape it off to our existing wiring harness here. Now we don't want to cut it because we still need to ensure that if someone else, if you did get a different trailer or someone else was using this vehicle, that they can still add this function if needed. So now this is going to leave us with two wires. We have our blue wire here and our black wire. The blue wire is going to be for the brake output circuit and this is going to be run inside the cab of the vehicle to our brake controller. And this black wire here is for 12 volt, bat is for 12 volt power. This is going to be the trailer battery charge line circuit. This is going to run all the way up to the front of the vehicle to our battery. So as we said, these two wires here, they need to go to the front of the vehicle. In order to do that, we're going to take our bonded duplex wire that came with the kit. It's this gray jacketed wire here. We're going to want to attach each of these to the respective wires here. And just for the sake of this, it doesn't matter which you go to, but I want to attach the black to the black and the white to the blue just to help us remember. But again, you can do either or, just make sure you write it down. So we just went ahead and stripped some of our jacket here off our two wires. Now we're going to strip some of the ends off so we can attach it to the butt connectors. Just going to crimp it on there like so. Then we have the last white wire here, which will go to the blue wire for our brake output. Once we have these both crimped on, we're going to take some electrical tape. We're going to seal it all up. So we went ahead and made our two connections here. We got everything taped up. What we're going to do next is we need to run this duplex wire to the front of the vehicle. In order to do this, there's going to be a large access hole inside our frame here that we're going to be able to fish the wires through the front. We're going to do this with an uh, airline tubing. We're going to show you that technique now. So in order to sneak the wires through the frame here, we told you about the fish wire technique, which essentially entails finding an open hole here on the back and then feeding the airline tubing through to 
come out the other side here. Then we're gonna tape the airline tubing to our duplex wire. Then we can pull the other one through. We're just gonna keep doing this, working our way down the frame until we get up near the cab. So we went ahead and got our wire ran here. Let's go ahead and show you the path that we took. You can see now, you can see partial of the gray duplex wire leading into the frame rail here. We ran that all the way down, all the way down over the tire here and to about this midway point right here. So we came all the way into the frame and then we came outside the frame just in front of our rear tire, which we could see here. And then all I did was I followed the parking brake cable and I simply just zip tied the duplex wire to the parking brake cable all the way up to the front of the vehicle. And then we stopped here right behind the front tire. So we got our duplex wire ran to the front of the vehicle here. If you remember, we stopped right behind the front tire here. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna open the hood here. And the reason for this is we need to attach that battery charge line that we pointed out earlier. It's the black wire to the positive battery terminal here on our vehicle. In order to do this though, we're gonna again be using the fish line technique with our airline tubing. We're gonna sneak this down through the firewall we're going to try to come out right behind the rear tire here so we can tie it off with our duplex wire and fish it up into the engine bay. So we did manage to get our fish wire here directly behind the rear tire. So now what we need to do is we have two wires in our duplex here. One needs to go up into the cab and we're actually going to use the grommet that our um, parking brake goes into the cab. And we also have a wire that needs to go in the engine bay. So at this point here, we need to split these wires. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to peel the jacket off. I'm going to peel it all the way down till we get about right here. That way I can split the two wires apart. One will go into the cab, one will go into the engine bay. So let's go ahead and take this jacket off now. So now that we have our wire separated here, we're going to take the black wire because we remember this is for the battery charge line circuit. We're going to find our red airline tubing that we snuck down from the firewall earlier. We're gonna connect the black wire to the airline tubing here with some electrical tape. And then we can go up top and pull the red airline tubing up through the firewall, bringing our wire with it. So we've gone ahead and pulled up our black wire here into the engine bay. And the next step is we need to find a place to mount our circuit breaker. And there's a couple different circuit breakers that come in this kit. The one we're looking for here for our black wire, the battery charge line circuit, is gonna be a 40 amp. So we're gonna need to find a place to mount this. The top of the firewall, there's a nice flat surface here. Should be a pretty good place to mount this. If you wanna tuck it into the fender, we can always do that as well. So now we're gonna take two self-tapping screws which come with the kit. We're going to attach our circuit breaker here. So now we're going to attach our black wire to our circuit breaker here. We're going to be attaching it to the top post here, which is a silver post. So we're going to go ahead and trim this like so. Now we can strip this back a little bit and attach our ring terminal. So now that we have the auxiliary side connected, we need to attach this copper side for the battery directly to our power source. Now if we look down here a little bit in the engine bay, there's going to be a cover here, which I'll show you now. We're going to remove this cover with some tabs on the top and bottom there. And this is going to reveal, reveal a power source here that we can hook our circuit breaker up to. So let's go ahead and take our black wire that we trimmed off earlier. We're going to cut a small section to go from there to there. So now that we have this end attached to the copper post, we're going to take the other end here, our bare end, and we're going to come down here and attach this to the positive terminal on our fuse block. So now we're going to take a 10 millimeter socket. We're going to go ahead and remove this nut here.
gonna go ahead and trim this further. I left it a little long the first time because I didn't know which path we were gonna take. So we'll trim this here. Now we're gonna attach a ring terminal. We're gonna use the larger ring terminal. I've been using the smaller ones that come because we have a little bit of a bigger post here. Now, you can simply attach it to the stud here and resecure our nut. So something we like to do here at E-Trailer to prevent short circuits, we like to go ahead and cover up the terminals here on our circuit breakers. We're just gonna use some airline tubing. We're just gonna push onto the ends there like so in order to prevent any issues with short circuiting. So we buttoned up all our connections at the battery. If you remember, when we split the duplex wire, we separated the white wire out. And this, when we used it to connect at the rear trailer connector, was to the blue wire, which is for the brake output. Therefore, we need to get this into the cab. And in order to do that, we stopped about right here underneath the driver's seat, because if we look directly up, we're gonna have two grommets side by side. We're gonna have this long one here, which is for the emergency brake cable. And then we're gonna have this circular grommet directly beside it. And what we're gonna do is, we're gonna use this grommet to feed our white wire into the cab. So we're just gonna cut a small slit here and try to feed our wire up through there. So now that we have our hole made, we went ahead and just stuck a very small amount of the wire through that little slit we made. We wanna come into the vehicle here and on this driver's side, this kick panel here, there's only three fasteners, which are simply push fasteners, which means we just need to be careful and pry it out away and it should free this area up. And then we can take the carpet, or in this case, the vinyl flooring, and we're gonna peel this back. Once this is peeled back, we should see our wire that we poked through earlier for the grommet. So we're just gonna continue and pull that the rest of the way through. So now that we have our white wire here, we're not gonna be attaching it right this second, but this is gonna go to the brake output circuit on the brake controller, whichever one we may choose. And also, this vehicle actually has some trailer brake controller wiring provisions. Not all do, but if you do have them, we're gonna search for a set of wires up under the dash here. If we see now, we'll pull them down. I've already freed them for you so you can see them. It's gonna be a set of four wires here, and they're actually gonna be labeled. So this is gonna be the wires that are gonna hook up directly to our brake controller here. We're gonna have the power, ground, the stop light switch circuit, as well as the brake output. However, on this vehicle, it's not really sure, we're not really sure where the blue brake output terminates here. It should be ran to the back of the vehicle, but for some reason Chevy sort of stopped running those and we don't quite know where it terminates, which is why we needed to run this white wire up here. But aside from that, we should still be able to use the power, ground, and the stoplight switch circuit. So now that we have everything hooked up, we're gonna go ahead and test both of our trailer connectors, both the four-way and the seven-way. Now the easiest way for you to do this would be to simply just hook up your trailer and watch the lights. But we actually sell these circuit testers here at E-Trailer, so we're gonna be using these. The first thing we're gonna check are the brakes, the left turn, the right turn, and then the running lights. As you can see, the light for the 12 volt power for the battery charge line is already going. That's because we have a direct power source to the battery. So now that we've tested all our lights, we've ensured everything's working. That's gonna do it today for our look and installation of the universal install kit for trailer brake controllers here on our 2018 Chevrolet Express van.